Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about 2.5 gigabits Ethernet. So let's dive right into it. Now, before we understand 2.5 or 2500, we have to understand 1000 BST, which we are utilizing most likely right now at this point in time. Now, this started very early on as in 2000, uh, year 2000, so to say. Now, this suppose uh, this puppy is faster than uh, 100 obviously one by one x to convert that network speed into how much you're gonna get into your know, file transfer that was like a 10 mbps to 100 so basically it was 10x benefit now if you have ever experienced a very cheap router and you are noticing even though connection coming from your let's say uh, service provider it could be as high as like let's say 300 mbps and you're like wi-fi testing always limited to 100 that means you are still at 100 base t network uh, protocol uh, it could be a handshake failure it could be the port limitation but generally cheap ones are on, still at 100 so you need to buy something that has 1000 bst then only you can get higher than 100 megabits uh, per second in terms of network speed file transfer would go from 10 mbps to 100 now is that a problem at this point? 100 mbps is still tangibly good and that's the file transfer one and for everything else that has bit rate let's say video file or a transmission video they are just still uh, you know well within this system so you're never gonna have any issues so then what's the problem like that's good that's here what's the problem problem is the number of client went exponentially meaning you can easily have a household that could have multiple people each of them with her device that are consuming internet 24 into 7 so consequence would be that pipe that uh, that thousand bst pipe itself is no longer limit uh, you know capable of feeding all of them uh, at the same time because it is capable of like you know if you do one by one you can take care of them but the moment you are like all of them are at the same time yeah that's not gonna happen so the moment you have multiple client network be it a household with lot of techie people so or be it a small startup that's a serious issue on top of that uh, in recent times a uh, lot of uh, effort has been put into nas and basically home built server so to say and uh, while 100 mps uh, in the early days was very good because if you are familiar with computer hardware you knew we used to have SATA 2.0 at that point in time this speed was like damn fast but we went from SATA to SATA 3 then we went to nvme at this point in time this speed is super slow it's like it's unbearably slow so even uh, transferring file uh, from a network storage is no longer fast enough meaning it would be cheaper uh, cheaper as in like time wise it would be more time efficient if you just uh, copied the file through a uh, what we call a basically usb3 hard drive you can easily exceed this 100 mbps if it's a uh, basically sata um, solid state system you can easily achieve 600 mbps or like at least 500 so this is a bottleneck at this point in time so if you have a lot of users in one network no longer good enough if you have local network you really need to feel that pipe to be much wider you have to and for backup reasons you do not want your backup to take very long you want your backup to be as quickly as possible so if the pipe itself is limited to this it's not gonna go very fast especially if you are backing up a lot of things so that's why this was good it got us so far but it's no longer sufficient enough now, if you are familiar with a network system, you must have been familiar with the fact that there is also 10 Gbps. What the hell happened to that? Well, it came on very early because like you have to understand computers started to explode in popularity very early on, as in like early 2000. So uh, the growth in tech for it was also exponential, meaning we went from 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps to 1000 Mbps to 10,000 Mbps surprisingly quickly. So this puppy, the first spec sheet was drawn in 2002. You're like, wait a minute, that's not that far. Yeah, that's the whole point. Again, at that point in time, it, everybody knew about it. It's like, this is for enterprise. That's why it was not made a big fuss about it. However, it did not grab on the way that people expected it to. Meaning, uh, when you are talking about consumer electronics, uh, cost per port does not matter too much simply because uh, how many equipment the uh, single household back in that day is gonna buy not that much even today how many ethernet ports do you have in your household your computer your tv your chromecast and things of that nature like not that much not that much but a, co a corporation can easily have 500 600 thousand few thousand that's easy for them so cost per port is significantly brutal on them compared to on a small system so that was like uh that, that was like a no boy no and then we had issue of new cable because uh, they tried to use 5e cable on uh, 10 gps system it does work especially for short runs it does work flat out it does work but problem is whenever you are talking about people who are paying boatload of money they expect the thing to work so having good enough is not good enough it has to be reliable corporation enterprise they are like dude i don't give a damn about how much it costs i give a damn about is it uptime like uh, is it 100 percent uptime like again physics does not allow you to achieve 100 percent uptime but 99.999 percent like you go to ibm server grade equipments they're like you know 99.69 uh, uptime so 
you understand that that cable was like barely enough especially if you have a lot of cables in the same small conduit uh, you could have a scenario where it's like dude it's not good enough so uh, they had to create a new cable standard for it which was classified as 6a so that created a slow adoption paradox meaning people were not that eager to jump into it now cable 6a it's ludicrously expensive per meter. Now you may be like, why? Well, the gauges are a bit thicker compared to, uh, you know, uh, 5E, but that itself is not an issue. The issue is the twist, meaning it has way too many twists per uh, foot compared to uh, 5E. Now you're like, what's the problem? Well, if you take one meter cable and you twist it, it shrinks. Now, if you twist it a lot, it shrinks some more. So if you take a, a proper 6A cable compared to, let's say, 5E cable and you untwist it to straighten it out, you will find out that 6A consumed almost twice the cable. And it also had a lot of uh, like, you know, plastic shielding and uh, other things. Basically, it's very expensive per meter wise, exponentially so. So flat out, many people were like, dude, it's, it's not, not going along. And then you had an issue of weak handshake because even though the system was built very early on and people were uh, products were sold as early as 2005 uh, the handshake issue was there uh, meaning like again once everything is done everything is awesome but sometimes things happen it's one of those things you could have a scenario where your fiber connection to your computer is like 300 mps everything is awesome and one time you're noticing hey dude everything is now limited to 100 what happened handshake failed it's one of those things that happens because of drivers cable issue and all that jazz but here's the, deal, the most of the time we do not notice it because if you drop from 300 mps to 100 mps internet you're not gonna notice it unless you are doing file transfer so it was like ah, who cares but in cooperation was they are generally maximizing the uh, network backbone so they're like dude 10x slower would be like you know jaw-droppingly slow for them so they will go from 10 to 1 that's not exact there was no 5 there is no 2.5 there is no 7.5 there is just like 10 or the, like you know 10 basically steps of 10 so weak handshake was a much uh, brutal punch to the guts than everything else and during the same time this slowed down, like this whole section slowed down the early adoption that is like you know early 2002 2010 that was the slow time and then optical came into the market and optical went up meaning uh, optical became cheaper and faster exponentially so meaning you can watch a videos from 2010 to 2015 and you will find a lot of people are getting like you know 10 uh, gps connection basically this puppy in optical using second hand equipment in their uh, how the heck they have that because corporation when they realize they have to do like you know take a very high cost per port they have to pay for new system and uh, like you know they will still be only getting 10 gps they are like how about we jump into optical and optical the growth in optical technology was ludicrously fast so you optical went from 10 gps to 25 to 50 to 100 to one uh, you know almost a few hundred gigabits per second like that's how fast it is now so a lot of people simply went for like again if i have to buy the bullet just go with optical to give you a simple context of that how fastly optical improved you will always find all the optical system generally have duplex system meaning they have two cables one dedicated for sending one dedicated for receiving that's awesome but here's this, somebody had a brilliant idea it's like dude light does not interact with light meaning if you have two photons going through each other they will just go through each other they will not interact with each other you can have like you know red light shining here blue light shining here they're gonna go through each other without any issue somebody came out what if we just throw away one fiber and what if we have red for uh, transmitting blue for receiving and invert that on the other side and voila one fiber can now do uh, sending and receiving at the same time even though you deployed it for two duplex system so now you have the luxury of either doubling the bandwidth or serving two clients at the same time without changing your infrastructure basically the cable in the building so that's how people started to go from fiber that was like very basic bitch uh, fiber that is like barely you know multi-mode uh, barely like you know barely good enough basically to like how about we just keep instead of like you know blinking rate which because of the multi-mode system you cannot blink beyond a certain point it will start to create a gibberish on the other end and like what if we have two channels you know, red and blue what if we have 12 channels somebody figured it out so right now you can find uh sf units that have like literally a prism and that it has a light unit and then it splits into other system is amazing how much technology goes into this that's why optical started to become the de facto standard for corporation where it's like dude don't uh, don't deal with 10 gbps just go with optical system again not every single company be mindful somebody is going to comment there not every i do understand but like majority majority so what about this 2.5? Now, this is specifically targeted for different audience compared to 10 GPS. 10 GPS was targeted for big boys. This is not targeted for. This is targeted for home use, basically you and me, and small businesses, basically people who are starting out. And this is what we classify as side grade. Basically, you're going from full HD monitors to full HD monitor that is a bit faster, meaning you're going from, let's say, full HD monitor that I used to have 21 inches, full HD monitor that is 24 inches, and now is able to run at 120 hertz. It's fast, but not 
excellent. It's not like, you know, I'm going to 4K 120Hz. So that's why it's like, it's a more of a side grade and more targeted for people, but like basically basic people rather than like, you know, elite people who are like, I'm dealing with 100 GPS. It's not targeted for that. And the core advantage because of the frequency, basically how many hertz it has, it's uh, more or less same as like, uh, basically it's low compared to 10 GPS. It can use CAT 5E cables without any issue. And per, uh, you know, per port cost is not that high. It's high, it's still high compared compared to uh, other systems. It's not free, uh, but it is good enough where it's like, you know, people can digest the cost and real world use is in meaning this is something that was released very recently and uh, every world, uh, it took time to, you know, uh, get adapted in the world, but uh, reality is results are in and people are happy with it. Meaning is this allows you to beat that thousand uh, system. Meaning if your optical service provider is providing you more than GBPS, you have to have this. And if you're like, how the heck your optical router is doing that, like, you know, having a same system and like, you know, transmitting and receiving at the same time, it's not doing two color system. Generally, it will be using timing system, meaning it's like there is a clock sync and that clock is like this second, you tell me what I need to listen. Uh, next second, you shut up and listen. It's like, you know, they are like timing it. It's like pulse, receive, pulse, uh, send, pulse, receive, pulse, send. It's doing very quickly. That's how you can get very high speed on cheap fiber system. Uh, if they try to do like dual optical system, they can do it. It's not, nothing is stopping them. It's just cost wise expensive. So you can, uh, you know, easily break that thousand barrier. Like uh, in my hometown, I can only get 993. Uh, so we cannot actually break 1000. But again, you can bond to three connection if you really need more speed. So that would require this sort of system. And if you have this coming into your household, your network infrastructure must be this. Otherwise, it will simply bottleneck this puppy to one GBPS. And this is becoming a normal thing. Like I specify, I'm like in a very small place and already have 1000. Uh, many of you may already live in a Bangalore or places. If you have deep pockets, you can easily like 10 GBPS connection. So what about the products? Are these products uh, available in the market? Thankfully, yes. Meaning there could be a good chance you may, if you have bought a computer recently before the sh world shortage, uh, you may have already bought a system motherboard uh, that has 2.5 GPS port. It became a new thing that like, again, because not everybody was announcing it next big thing, next to who event. It was like, you know, almost under the rug, but you can uh, randomly find people who have 2.5 GPS systems now. Because be mindful, uh, corporation did not accept 10 GPS, but it became almost a de facto system for uh, Workstation, workstation from Apple, workstation from Dell, workstation from Lenovo, workstation from HP, all of them had 10 GPS connection because there was no other option for them. So because SPF uh, system, that optical system is very finicky. You cannot just like, you know, somebody has to do the installation for you. You cannot just like plug it, it works. It's not like that. So that's why the RJ45 is still used. It's like plug it, it will work. So that's why the motherboard uh, already has this and because of the usb3 that came into the uh, market that usb3 if you uh, convert in small bits it can transmit around 5 gps now somebody in usb3 was uh, high very high when they came up in the name so they went from usb3 to 4 they did not call it 4 they call it usb3 gen 2 <sighs> then Gen 3, and then they're like, rename it to Gen 1 X2, Gen 3 X4, blah, 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 blah. So they should have called it like, you know, 4, 5, 6, or how Linux pushed it, it should have been like, you know, USB 5 GBPS, USB 10 GBPS, USB 20 GBPS. Uh, so if you think in that way, so you're like, wait a minute, that means basic USB 3, even the oldest USB 3 can easily support 2.5 GPS. Yes, and that's why this sort of adapters became very prominent in the market, because you can just buy it, plug it in, and it will work with most of the system, desktops and Apple without any issue. Home NAS right now, uh, you can buy many network attached storage. They used to have like, you know, one Ethernet connection that was a thousand, uh, you know, base T. Not good enough. 2.5, good enough. So that also became a normal thing. Routers, uh, router could have like two modes of operation where they could have one 2.5 GBPS port. If your router is designed in such a way where it's like you're supposed to connect one backhaul and then transmit to, you know, multiple clients, or it could have multi if you're rich, where it, all the ports are like, you know, 2.5 GBPS. And, uh, Generally, right now, at this point in time, it's still not targeted for like, you know, bulk uh, loading. Basically, everything is now 1 GPS. It's not supposed to that. Everything is supposed to be still using 1 GPS. The back holes, meaning if your ISP is giving you more, that's supposed to be 2.5 GPS. If you're connected to network storage, that's supposed to be 2.5 GPS. If you're connecting workstation to a network, uh, network storage through the switch, those th uh, two things should be at 2.5 GPS. So you can do video editing on the network without any issue. So that's the whole point of it. Yeah, the products are already in the market. They're very quietly released in the market like be it asus be it intel be it other companies it's like very quietly it's like you look around you're like dude it already has it so it's one of those good things that we have it already so how do you utilize it well the 
simple thing. If you if want everything to be 2.5, you just have to have money. If you have money, you can buy routers that all the ports are like 2.5 gigahertz, but they are idiotically expensive. And be mindful, uh, it's a necessary if you want uh, Wi-Fi 6E because Wi-Fi 6E exceeds 1 Gbps. So it needs a backbone that can feed it that uh, speed. Otherwise, what's the point? So that's there. And backhaul is generally a better way of deployment. That's why all the uh, modern NAS, I'm not talking expensive NAS, I'm talking basic bitch NAS, uh, they are still coming with 2.5 Gbps port. Even basic uh, routers are coming with 2.5 Gbps port. So you can connect NAS to router, router to everybody else, and you can still get good fat pipe. Now, if you really want like even better experience, of course, you have to buy a, a switch that has like all ports are 2.5 Gbps. Then you can have uh, let's say a small uh, video editing firm or uh, like you know photographic shoot then you will have a NAS attached to this and then you'll have multiple editors connect to it everybody working as fast as possible and it's very easy to upgrade in old system you can just buy a PCI card if you need to or have the USB adapter because again it works on USB 3 it's rather known system rather brand not it's not brand new because USB at this point in time is supposed to be 20 uh, Gbps and now it's moving to 40 Gbps so USB is already much far ahead so even basic normal USB 3.0 will work without any issue. So if your ISP is giving you more than, uh, you know, GBPS, which is called as multi, uh, multi gigabit per second connection, then you have to have 2.5 infrastructure. And uh, this system is utilized by a lot of uh, on-site shooters, meaning if they are, uh, let's say photographers are collecting a lot of photos, dumping into a laptop, then they are uh, dumping that laptop file into the basically NAS in the office, they will utilize something like this. This has uh, become very common. And if you are lucky, your laptop may already have it. Some laptops have it. It's not as popular in laptops as I would like it to, but it is there. So these are the use cases of this meaning you can actually utilize it if you look around it and you are not uh, very broke you can do it so this was my presentation on basically uh, 2.5 gigabits per second hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching